If you own a vehicle, sooner or later, that check engine light is going to come on. So the question is, is a $15 code scanner just as good as the one that costs $50? Well, let's find out. If you're driving along when suddenly the check engine light illuminates, there are some very affordable scan tools that can provide you with some very helpful diagnostic information. At a price of only $15 is this Lee Kulu brand. It claims to be a plug and play, easy to set up scanner. It's a code reader and it's supposed to be able to clear the codes. It can also retrieve the vehicle identification number. And that's a pretty large OBD connector. The Likulu is made in China. In order to use a scan tool, the ignition switch needs to be in the on position without the engine running. The scan tool plugs into the onboard diagnostics port that's typically located under the kick panel or near the center console. Let's check out the trouble codes on this 2003 Chevrolet Suburban. And it takes a Likulu four seconds to boot up and reach the main screen before the scan can be initiated. And the Likulu is pretty quick at retrieving the codes and very close to 1.4 seconds. You'll have to press the button three times to display the first of three codes. At a price of $20 is this Creator brand. It works with vehicles from the year 1996 and newer. It claims to be able to read live data. Turns off the malfunction indicator light. Includes oxygen sensor and a VAP system test. And this OBD connector just doesn't offer much for gaining a good grip. The creator is made in China. And it takes the launch creator just over 4 seconds to fully power up. After 42 seconds of trying, the launch creator failed to launch and was not able to retrieve the codes. And I made 5 attempts without any success. Also the price of $20, the same price as the launch creator, is this Autel brand. It claims to be extremely easy to use. Easily determines the cause of the check engine light. It retrieves generic P0, P2, P3, and U0 codes. And the Autel's connector is easy to grip. Made in China. After I plug the Autel into the port, the Autel is pretty slow to get ready to work at 6.3 seconds. After initiating the scan, the information on the trouble codes is available in 1.8 seconds. I had to engage buttons three times to retrieve the codes the same as the Likulu scan tool. At a price of $23 is this Moto Power brand. It claims to have an LCD 128 by 64 pixels. It has a white backlight and a contrast adjustment. It claims to support nine protocols capable with most vehicles from 1996 and newer. Made in China. And the motor power came to life in about 2.5 seconds after it was plugged into the OBD port. And the motor power has a DTC or diagnostic trouble code hotkey and the codes are displayed in 1.3 seconds with engaging a button just one time, the best yet. Also the price of $23 is this Ansel 310. It's an extremely popular OBD2 scanner with about 20,000 in sales every 30 days. It claims to be accurate, fast, and easy to use. We're going to test that. Allows you to quickly read and clear diagnostic trouble codes, read live data, and hard memory data. The Ansel is made in China. And the Ansel 310 is almost as slow as the Autel to fully power up in very close to 5.3 seconds. Once the scan was initiated, the Ansel 310 took the most amount of time yet to retrieve the codes at very close to 20 seconds. I had to engage buttons four times for the display to show the trouble code. At a price of $36 is this Foxwell NT201. It claims to be the easiest in the industry. Complete OBD2 support with CAN capability. Displays complete live data stream. Features on-screen code definitions. Made in China. And the Foxwell 201 takes 4.4 seconds to power up. The Foxwell takes another 7.5 seconds to retrieve the trouble codes. I had to engage buttons on the display a total of 5 times to finally have the trouble codes displayed on the screen. However, part of this is due to the increased capability of the Foxwell to store the existing trouble codes for future reference. At a price of $40 is this Autofix OM126P. Retrieves generic P0, P2, P3, and U0 codes. Live data capable. It can retrieve the vehicle identification number. Made in China. And the Autofix is very quick and ready for action in only 2 seconds. And the Autofix does have a hotkey for trouble codes and the codes are on display in only 1 second after engaging just one button, the best yet. The second code scanner we'll be testing that's made by Ansel is a $40 code scanner, the AD410. Reads and clears stored emissions codes, pending codes, and displays code definitions. O2 sensor test is used to monitor and adjust the air fuel mixture. It has a QVGA display and a new user interface. They claim that it's so easy to use that you won't need to read the manual. Made in China. Just like the Autofix, the Ansel 410 is ready for action in two seconds. Since there's no hotkey for trouble codes, I had to engage the buttons three times to retrieve the codes. However, the Ansel processes information very quickly in just over half a second to retrieve the codes. The second code scanner we'll be testing that's made by Foxwell costs $63 and it's the model NT301. Includes hotkeys for reading and erasing DTC and IM readiness. Red, yellow, and green LEDs and built-in speaker indicate emissions monitor status. They can also catch intermittent problems and confirm repairs during drive cycle. Made in China. And the Foxwell 301 needs 4.3 seconds to fully boot up and reach the main menu. The Foxwell takes an additional 7.3 seconds to retrieve the codes. Once the trouble codes are retrieved, it takes an additional 4 button engagements for a total of 5 for the trouble codes to display. 
As Ben Franklin used to say, time is money and the code scanner that boots up and then retrieves trouble codes the fastest is the Ansel 410 at 2.7 seconds. The auto fix is almost as fast at 3 seconds and Moto Power 3.8 seconds. If it's all about simplicity, the Moto Power and Auto Fix both have hotkeys and they retrieve trouble codes with one push of a button. Several of the other brands require pushing a button three times. Once you know the trouble codes that are present, in some instances, it's very helpful to select the freeze frame function. This will provide some great information as to what was going on when the trouble code was triggered. I engaged buttons four times and it took four seconds to retrieve the information. Each screen displays four data points. So the emissions code was triggered when the engine was at 205 degrees Fahrenheit. There's some additional information on short-term and long-term fuel trim and the map sensor. The engine was at 1,630 RPM and the vehicle was traveling at 55 miles per hour. This probably won't help us with the evaporative emissions code, but it might be rather useful for other codes. Just like the Lakulu, the Autel takes five button engagements to reach the freeze frame data. The Autel is a little faster at 3.75 seconds. There are four data points per screen and there's no buffering or lagging after engaging the buttons. And the buttons have to be engaged seven times to reach the freeze frame data with the motor power. 3.75 seconds to retrieve the freeze frame data is the same as the Autel. There are four data points per screen and the large font is very easy to read. And five button engagements and the Ansel takes 3.4 seconds to retrieve the freeze frame data, the fastest yet. Instead of four data points per screen, the Ansel shows six data points. However, the Ansel requires scrolling through each data point before you can advance to the next screen. Unfortunately, the Ansel is lagging very bad at over one second reaction time with each press of the button. So about nine seconds to get from one screen to the next. And it takes six button strokes to initiate freeze frame data retrieval and the Foxwell is the slowest yet at 6.4 seconds to get the codes. And seven data points per screen is the most yet. To navigate to the next screen, you'll have to engage the button seven times. However, the Foxwell has a very fast processor and there's no noticeable lag. And the autofix pulled the trouble codes quickly at only 1.4 seconds. However, it takes eight button engagements to initiate the freeze frame data retrieval process. What I really like about the autofix is that it spells everything out. The downside is that there are only three data points per screen and you'll have to scroll through each data point to advance to the next screen. And the answer looks a lot like the autofix. It did take a full second longer to retrieve the freeze frame data, but the screens look identical. The spelled out information is really helpful if you're not already familiar with the acronyms. And the Foxwell 301 looks a lot like the 201, but it does have a larger display. It takes six button strikes to initiate the freeze frame data pull. And the Foxwell 301 is the slowest yet at 6.65 seconds. There are seven data points per screen and they're all abbreviated. One very nice feature is that you can select the help key for additional information. All of the code scanners have an IEM readiness feature. This will basically let us know if this vehicle is ready for an emissions inspection. And the Likulu requires five button strikes to retrieve the inspection readiness information. And the information is displayed on three screens and the information is accurate. With the Autel, it takes four button strikes to reach the inspection readiness screen. And the information is displayed on three different screens. And the buttons have to be engaged five times on the motor power for the IM readiness. Just like the Likulu and the Autel, the information is displayed on three screens. And the algorithm for the Ansel is very similar to the motor power and it takes five button strikes to retrieve the IM readiness. Since there's only three data points on each screen, it takes four screens to retrieve all the data. And the Foxwell has a hot key for IM readiness, but it does take quite a bit longer than the previous brands at 10 seconds to retrieve the data. However, everything is displayed on just one screen. It indicates that the mill or malfunction indicator light is illuminated, two trouble codes, and one pending trouble code. And the autofix also has a hot key for IM readiness. It's about 10 times faster than the Foxwell at retrieving the information at just over one second. Just like the Foxwell, everything fits on one screen. While it is subjective, the screen does seem easier on the eyes and easier to read than the Foxwell. And the Ansel 410 also has a hot key and everything looks identical to the autofix. Very nice looking display. And the Foxwell 301 also has a hot key for IM readiness. However, it does take longer than the autofix and the Ansel 410 at just over 10 seconds. And the display just doesn't seem as easy on the eyes compared to the autofix and the Ansel 410. While it is highly subjective, the autofix and the Ansel 410 receive the best possible rating of 1 for ease of quickly accessing the IM readiness information and ease of reading the information on the display. The Foxwell scanners also perform well with a rating of 2. This 2008 Honda Civic has one trouble code for the engine and one for the transmission. Let's see if the Lakulu can find both trouble codes. Unfortunately, the Lakulu only found the trouble code for the engine and not the transmission. And the launch creator is back in action scanning the codes on the Honda Civic. And the launch creator wasn't able to find the fault code for the transmission. And the Autel is the first scanner so far in the lineup to locate the fault code for the transmission. However, it does take quite a bit of navigating to locate both codes. Unfortunately, the motor power wasn't able to locate the fault code for the transmission and only found the engine code. Just like the Autel, the Ansel 310 successfully located both the engine and the transmission trouble codes for the Honda Civic. 
However, it takes quite a bit of navigating through the menus to retrieve the codes. And a fox will also identify both treble codes. However, it takes quite a bit of navigating to work your way through the menus. And a hot button on the autofix is a very nice feature and it identified both treble codes quickly. Without a hot key, it took quite a few more button strikes to navigate the engine and then the transmission codes. And the algorithm for the Foxwell 301 looks the same as the Foxwell 201. And it requires quite a few keystrokes to navigate to both treble codes. Only six of the nine code scanners were able to identify the fault code for the transmission. While it is highly subjective, the autofix requires the least amount of navigating to locate both treble codes. And the Likulu and Autel are not able to look up treble code information, but the rest of the scanners offer this capability. And the launch creator isn't able to launch, so we'll check out the motor power. If you type in the wrong fault code, you can use the up or down arrows to scroll through a list of fault codes in numerical order. And the Ansel 310 isn't as user friendly for inputting the treble code. You'll have to hold down the enter button while also selecting the up or down arrow to move the digit left or right. Compared to the motor power, the Ansel 310 does provide a little more information regarding the fault code. Inputting the treble code information into the Foxwell 201 requires one hand or one button at a time. It provides just as much information on each treble code as the Ansel 310. Inputting the treble code information with the autofix is a two-hand process. However, the information is just as informative as the Foxwell 201. The Ansel 410 is pretty much the same as the autofix regarding the process for inputting the treble code and the information that's provided by the scan tool. You'll only need one hand to input the code information into the Foxwell 301. Instead of just providing the treble code identification information, it also provides possible reasons for the code. Definitely very useful information. Let's check out the live data on a 2022 Toyota 4Runner. Being able to see the live data can really be helpful for diagnosing certain engine problems. And the Ansel 310 takes about five and a half seconds to launch the live data stream. The scan tool lags pretty badly to the up and down arrows and takes about a second to scroll. Launching the live stream data on a Foxwheel 201 is very slow at just over 32 seconds. However, once the live stream is up and going, it provides seven data points per screen and there's no noticeable lag when scrolling up or down the screen. Instead of taking 32 seconds to pull up the live data, the autofix is up and going in only 5.8 seconds. Instead of using an acronym or abbreviation, the information is spelled out. Only three data points are displayed on each screen, but there's no noticeable lag with the autofix. And the Ansel 410 looks the same as the autofix, and it performs like it too at 5.8 seconds to pull up the live data stream. The information displayed for the live data stream looks identical to the autofix. Just like the Foxwell 201, the 301 is very slow at 32.7 seconds to begin providing live data. The live data screens look the same as the Foxwell 201. The Ansel 310 is the fastest at retrieving live data. However, the scan tool lags badly when trying to scroll up or down the screen. On the other hand, the Autofix and Ansel 410 display live data just about as quickly and their software is much more responsive to user input. Being able to see graphical representation regarding performance of certain sensors can be very helpful. And the Ansel 310, Ansel 410, and Autofix offer this capability. Both Foxwell scan tools, the Autofix and the Ansel 410 offer the ability to test oxygen sensor performance. Not bad for budget scan tools. If it's a bright and sunny day, being able to see the information on the screen of the scanner might be a challenge. However, the Lee Kulu is very easy to see in direct sunlight. And the font size on the Autel is a little smaller, but it's still pretty easy to see on a bright and sunny day. And trying to read the information on the display of the Creator is nearly impossible, as the launch Creator just doesn't offer enough screen contrast or enough backlight. And the Moto Power has a pretty large screen and is very easy to read in direct sunlight. And the Ansel is pretty easy to see, but the font size is quite a bit smaller than the Moto Power. And the Foxwell 201 is just as difficult to see as the Creator. And the Autofix is even more difficult to see than the Creator and the Foxwell, as the backlight just isn't nearly bright enough. And the Ansel 410 is just a little easier to see than the Autofix, but more difficult to see than the Creator and the Foxwell 201. And the Foxwell 301 is just a little bit better than the Autofix and the Ansel 410. While it is highly subjective, the Lee Kulu and the Moto Power are the easiest displays to see in direct sunlight. And the code scanners with dark or colored screens are by far the most difficult to see in a bright environment. I measured the size of the screens for the code readers, and the Foxwell NT301 has a larger screen at almost 4 square inches. Moto Power screen is at 3.29 inches, and Autofix 2.98. Four of the nine scan tools are designed to be updated. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to update the launch creator. It blew right past the option to change to English. The screen on the launch creator wasn't able to power up during the attempted update. Downloading the software for the autofix was just as quick as the Foxwell. It already has the latest software update. You will need a Windows computer and it takes about 5 minutes to download the software to update the Foxwell code scanners. Both the Foxwell 201 and 301 already had the latest software installed. When it comes to installing software on computers, I highly recommend using Caution, but that's a topic for another day. I was not able to update the Ansel, and there's no software to be downloaded for updating it at a future date. In case you're wondering, all the code scanners were able to clear the trouble codes. Maybe you've watched this entire video and you're still not sure which code scanner to select. 
The code readers are organized from least expensive to most expensive. As you might expect, more expensive code scanners are typically more capable. A good starting point is to figure out how much capability you're looking for in a scanner. If you need a code scanner for mostly reading trouble codes and then turning off the check engine light, the Motor Power and the Ansel 310 seem like a great choice for around $23. If you want to begin the troubleshooting process, the four most expensive brands offer the most capability. While the Launch Creator claims to offer a lot of capability, it failed to read codes on two out of three vehicles. Beyond capability, how efficiently the scan tool performs is another factor to consider. The Motor Power retrieves trouble codes quickly with minimal button engagements. The Ansel 310 offers a little more capability than the Motor Power. However, it processes information a lot slower and requires more button engagements to navigate throughout the various menus. The Ansel 410 seems very similar to the Autofix. However, the Autofix has a hotkey that comes in handy and it can be updated online while I wasn't able to update the Ansel 410. Finally, the Foxwheel 301 is a little bit slow to retrieve codes. However, it is the only code scanner that is capable of providing possible causes for trouble codes. I'd like to know if you found this review helpful on the code scanners, and if you'd like to see a follow-up review on more expensive scanners or the type that connect to your phone through a Bluetooth connection. All the videos in this channel, including this one, are viewer suggested. So if you have a video idea, I hope you'll take time to leave a comment. Thanks so much for watching. Please take care, and I look forward to next time.